If I can get over here, if I can get an opportunity to be, well, if I can get, if I can get by myself for a while, two or three days, just to make sure everything balances out, and make all the different tags and bodies. But uh, I would say, you know, I would say within a week, in a week and a half, because there's a lot of times these schools like for you. What, what the initial thing is, just like they may like to shift shifts and things around. And I always try to give them that opportunity.
I'm surprised. You know, when you had it set up here for a trial that time, I had my belt off, I had my it finally come up that maybe was my steel toe shoe setting up thing. Well, they almost had me stripped out here in the hall, and I, people backed up behind me. Finally, JD says, I know him, let him go. <laughs> no, they haven't caught me. First, I didn't have my steel toe boots on, but I, you know, belt buckles yeah. and Resolution that we need to, you know, we can all look at it. John's almost got to sign it. You guys are asking. <clears throat> this will allow the highway department to continue using federal surplus property. And it just so happened it came up a couple weeks ago. They sent me, says, you've got to renew this before you can use this anymore. So we've got it together, putting our paperwork together. Of course, it ain't going to be me now. It's, that's been a real good program for us. We have used it and saved a bunch of money by using it at different times. A lot of times the, uh, the equipment we have purchased is several years old but didn't have any options. <coughs> almost, I think I was showing Joe what we had done and you know we got that steel ground laboratory lower. I don't know what year it is, but it had less than six hundred dollars on it. <laughs> Since you're brand new, you can, you know, you guys know that. I'm going to even tell you, Larry. One of you, uh, uh, comfortable city about something like that. Oh, yeah. Except for the money back. Is that what this is? That's what this is. Okay. Uh, we were down Friday. Uh, that's what this is. We typically go to uh, Springfield to look at. Yeah. When I'm up there, yeah. if I have time, I go by and look. And I bought, you know, <coughs> little tools, and it's always quality. I went up there one time, I was telling Joe, I went up there one time and they had a cardboard box on the counter. It was almost a third and a half full of each and a quarter combination wrenches. I've got brand new wrenches and 
another box that was eight or eight. I called Bill, said, how many do we need? And I brought back four or five for each. They were like one or two bucks a piece. You know, these were 10, 15, 20 dollar wrenches for one or two bucks a piece. Yeah. I bought a set of uh, truck uh, wrenches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Full set for one nine miners. That's what I'm sorry. Maybe they're on a different program. This may be uh, part of the bridge. Okay. okay. It's through the police department. They're getting it. Well, yeah. The chief's involved. Yeah. I got, see, I helped Bob Griffey get a couple of little generators, five KW generators up there. Uh, and I forget what they call that, but it's a special program for their giving it now. That means they're really more stuck with them now. They've got to keep it. Yeah. The only way you can dispose of it is take it back. We, are, we pay for our stuff and we got to keep it for a certain period of time. And then we can, if we find it no longer beneficial to us, so we can. Jason and uh, John both have some. I can figure all three. Your plans are. You can do all three. Appreciate that. Yeah. Help Joe out, I think. Uh, seen any other day with job And it's what it is is upgrading from signal lines, flashers to <coughs> gates. What, what, what was the cost again on that? It was two hundred and two thirty seven or something like yeah, that. Yeah, two thirty six, two thirty seven. Something like that. Uh, is there any crossings that just has cross on instead of lines? Mm-hmm. I thought I'm saying it worth that. I can think of five. Uh, one of about the only one used as it is a farmer. Up north of 169 foot. They wanted to close it and I have resisted every time they asked me about it because they use that and take farm equipment from their operation yeah. straight across the road. If they close that crossing, they've got to go out and come down 169, a big farm equipment, then up 45. It, it's a safety issue, I think. The yeah. Lord, it takes them to keep that open. Yeah. And the other three are uh, involved in EEI. There's Job in Eastern, and that may be one train a day. And then the other one is the old line, and they use that for storage. It almost never sees a tree. That's, there's three on the job in Eastern. And then the old Jones Square Road, the old line. Yeah, I don't know where you're talking about. But they use that for storage so it almost yeah. never sees a train. That's about to go far too late. You know, uh, mowing for part of the country right now. Uh, I'm a thinking, I saw them coming this way, so I'm thinking they come down to Bargerville out today, but they are uh, on all the chip roads, back over, I'd say close to North Avenue, 
on the Alden Channel. So, we're working our way back west. We working in the circle and come back and pulling back west. Did the county highways now we're back on the all and chip and some gravel. We'll get the gravel we'll get done. We'll Thank you. Right. Uh, they can copy that for you. Yeah, yeah. if you can go there with Lynn. Yeah. That's what we called them. That's, that's what we called them. Yeah. Radio Island. That was set when I came here, so we've continued with that. And, and that's pretty liberal, really, because I know some counties that it's a lot higher than that. You know, they want the, a thousand or four quarter mile, or if they're within so many feet of an oil chip, they make a tie in that oil chip. So Sections of gravel. That's, like I said, that's kind of pretty loose. You got to make it worth our while. Yeah. Move equipment in and yeah. get it ready. Yeah. Too, but I'm hoping not much increase. I haven't really talked to anybody that's had a long living this year. See what they're at. Doing it a little earlier than normal so that I can you know, help him get through it. He can see the process. Normally we wait till July. <coughs> For the most part, that's worked well for us because it's gotten some of the better prices in the district. Yeah. Yeah. as much as he can. You know, yeah, he's doing something just about every single day. Like when he's a basketball game. Yeah. Great to come out.
Oh, yeah, he's, he's going to be in seventh grade. We tried, uh, and that was pricing. We got to go with files that we switch one grader over to grader and see what we can do. That's pricing. You got to go with all six at one time, and they're going to be more expensive.
bars and basketball players, and he really enjoyed the amount. Yeah. That AJ think you're like the yeah. NBA player. Oh, yeah. Was he inside the gate when he said that, or was he just? He had been, well, yeah, he'd been out there for two weeks working for a contractor in Paducah, and they never got around to run the background check on him. Mm -hmm. well, when they run the background check, they seen something that would have flagged him, so they escorted him out the gate. And I guess that didn't sit well, so he left and he came back and then made a comment at the gate shack, or guard shack. Oh, okay. Smart you know, move. <laughs> Didn't know that was going to grow into that kind no. of deal. <laughs> so, uh, does he go? To, I mean, is that a federal offense for the group? Well, the FBI come down and looked at it, and they said it really didn't matter. But they probably could have charged him under federal statutes. But since Patrick said he could do it here, we went ahead and charged him here. It's a disorderly conduct, and there's a clause in there for making a bomb threat. It's a class three felony. So we just, we just went ahead and charged him. stress on it every day is the one that Kent drives on the interstate. And he's pushing 175,000 miles. And we've had some trouble with that one. And I'm looking at spending some major money on it. I don't want to. Now in the past, you know, we've always gone to Jefferson City and bought those cars over there. <coughs> last week, and a 2010 will run me right at $15,000 for one car. I called Bob Vito last week. This is where Sheriff Faulkner of Johnson County gets all of his cars. Chief Massey just bought two cars from him a couple of weeks ago. And uh, if I pass this around, he's got two cars, a 2008 and a 2005. The police cars, they both got right at 64,000 miles apiece. They come off all police equipment, brand new tires. I can get both of them for 15,500. take out of my car is the radio. It's got cages, light bars. So that extra expense that we normally have to go with moving everything Yeah, behind. all I have to do is just switch radio. And whatever extra money it's going to take, I can take out of the police vehicle fund. We've got money in there for that. So it's a 2008 Ford Grand Crown Victoria, 64,000 
63,000 miles. And the other one's an 05 with 64,000. Sure, the one What was it before we just, what did we get some cars from Missouri? That, that was the ones in Jefferson City. Now they're like two years old and they've got 50,000 miles on them. Like I said, they're worth $15,000 for one car. But it was almost it's the, the ones that Bob Murphy was that? Yeah. Us out of business. We can. But these come with new tires. And like I said, Ellery's been using them for years, and Harry just bought two, so I mean, he's got a good reputation for it. How about like the stripe and the decals? That would be extra, and I'll take care of that out of the police vehicle fund. What kind of money do you think we'll get out of this? Will we get rid of the one that Hillebrand is in Kent's? Is there one more? Probably possibly have a third one, and you're probably looking at about a thousand dollars a piece out of them. Now, the one at Hill Brands, I'm not sure what I can get up because I mean it, it starts, but it won't move because rear ends out. So people can buy it just for parts. I might clean Kent's up, and maybe one more. I get about a thousand dollars a piece out of them. So maybe three thousand. I still have one, one spare. That's the Durango that we're using. And plus, get the insurance. I don't know what happened with Tomorrow. What's the insurance run just for one car a year? Uh, with that fleet policy, I don't know how much it is. It's not a lot, but I mean, that could save us a little bit of three off the insurance policy there. What do y'all think? Checked around and found somebody that's <coughs> ready for I'm not going to find anything cheaper than this. And I don't know if he's ever going to have any more of these. What do you think, Jeff? Sounds like a reasonable deal. Ted, I don't see how the uh, car and phone interstate, the transmission and the engine safe together. It's on the floor every time we make yeah, it. Every time it goes with the car before. So it's just a matter of time before they go out. Oh, yeah. It's in the budget was fifteen thousand, whatever extra I'll take care of it on another fund. Okay. No, you don't need to. You okay. just everybody good with it? I'm no. good with okay. it. Sounds good. Yeah. Because I might let this guy know it's today and if we get the check by one day next week. I'll just talk to Juanita. Oh, Juanita. <laughs> I don't know how to cut him. <laughs> Just go over there. If you, do you have? <clears throat> can you go with me? Can <laughs> 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 you go with me? Can 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 you go with me? I'll go with you. <laughs> I've had two people contact me about that uh, hand thing out there, beaches. You know, it looks like switch to follow. Yeah. Well, I, I told and this person said that people park them there, you know, and talk and whatever. And said, uh, they think the thing's going to fall down. Private property. I don't know what to do about it. We call it Western Baptist. I was under oh, you understanding did? that they own it. We've told them twice. They do own it. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to wait till it falls before they do anything. But yeah, you know, somebody parks in there and they're under storm thinking they're safe. Yeah. They're going to have it on top of it. Yeah. And it's getting worse. Better I noticed it's there. starting to pop the bricks at the top. You look at those columns and they're, it's, it's being stressed. Yeah, there's, there's some, some concerned citizens, you know. The last time what, they may, what may happen, Gerald, is they just say no trespassing, stay off. Yeah, that's true. It's good. 
they can use that property, you know, just don't park under there. Well, there's several school buses that use that as a pickup spot. Really? Huh. I mean, they don't park underneath the awning, but they park in the parking lot. Well, if you didn't contact that fellow, we did. Yeah, yeah. So we made at least two phone calls over. And last time I told them that, you know, about the liability issue, I thought maybe that'd be enough to scare them. You'd think so. You'd think they'd want to get it all tore down over with. Yeah. Doing? doing good, Chase. Good to see you. Yeah. Been staying busy this morning. talking about chasing those ball games, so we're all. I bet as you and your son still do a lot of. Yeah, doing what we can. You do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, since uh, all the towns have done away with their legion programs, all the high schools are playing ball. And, yeah, they, they got this I think summer it's league. Better. Yeah, my son's got a game tonight at somewhere in West Frankfurt. They yeah. got that what's called the wooden bat league. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which. They're using the aluminum now too. Yeah, are they? Yeah, oh, are they? Yeah, the other day, the Harrisburg, or somebody came down and played Massac. It's just they have a choice. So some a lot of the Massac kids were using when bats, but I didn't. I don't know. That I mean, there's not a rule that says they can't use aluminum. No, as, as a matter of fact, I mean, I don't. I don't think they even keep up with wins and losses. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you do you do you kind of look at the say? Aluminum bass to see if they're uh, marked with that. What's it called? Not BPA, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, I can't. It's not think BESR it. anymore either. It's, uh, I can't think. They've of taken it. the pop out of. We do no, We don't check them in summer league. We but we check them in the high school games. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I take it back. We we don't have to in the boys. We have to in the girls. In, in the boys game. Our life, the, the uh, umpires just have, have to ask both coaches. Both teams are legally uh, oh. equipped. And then if there's a protest and they finds out that that they were cheating, then the coach gets suspended. Okay. So, but we don't have to go through and check every bat anymore. No. So is there no such thing as Legion Ball now? Or? No, they're still playing Legion Ball, but I know uh, it's my understanding that Harrisburg and of course uh, us and I think AJ, I think all of them have, have dropped their program. Oh. So where it was, you know, just the top three or four kids off each high school team would play summer ball. Now, you know, at least there's yeah. about 20 of the local, uh, yeah. Southern Illinois schools that are playing. Mm -hmm. We had that lease agreement. Anything back from Honeywell? Uh, 
kids are unruly, their parents are unruly, they just walk off and leave them. And it's, uh, we're, we're really in bad shape. So that's that, what I want to tell you. And uh, would anybody be interested in one of these books? I'm sorry, I don't have more, but I gave them away. Well, you can pass them around to each other. And then I, I feel that you think that my credibility is not whatever. But I've been looking at this. I became interested in it in uh, 1994. I have read and read and read and whatever. But I can prove to you right now with this here, the gold fringe flag. Dwight, Dwight D. Eisenhower signed executive order. Executive orders, uh, executive orders is for like you with your executive order to tell your secretary what to do and what your people in the area want to do. And it's not to do this. August 21, 1959, it is printed in the Federal Register, blah, 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 and it says, a military flag is a flag that resembles a regular flag of the United States, except that it has a yellow fringe border on three sides. Every nation in the world accepts the law of the flag. And uh, this is an, uh, the gold fringe flag is a military flag. Now we have in our courtrooms gold fringe flags, which means that we're not under constitutional law here. Excuse me. Yes. By the way, I want to apologize for my answers today. I have quite a distracted machine in myself. When I came in the door and saw Tim, and I went all the gaga, you know, oh, Tim. The <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies always do that. You know. Michelle does a great job of restraining herself. Yeah, she's, she's uh -huh. <laughs> 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 well, anyway, that kind of uh, this flag flying in our courthouse. And then they've got all these numbers. The military flag is a flag that resembles what we already did with the yellow fringe. The President of the United States designated this deviation from the regular flag with an executive order and in his capacity as commander in chief. The flag uh, of martial law, an ancient and custom, sanctions the fringe on colors and standards, but there is to be no good reason of our president precedent for use of this important. <coughs> According to many uh, internet sites espousing expertise in violating flags in the courtroom, that display behind the judge is a military courtroom. Such a courtroom tries cases on the basis of military law, not constitutional law, not civil law, and not state law according to Army regulations. The gold freak flag stands only inside military courts that sit in summary court martial proceedings against citizens. These courts are partially governed by local rules, but more especially the manual of court from the U.S. Uh, Army. A judge who sits under a gold fringe flag becomes a captain or a master of the ship. The judge has absolutely power, makes the rules as he goes. The gold fringe flag that you are leaving your constitutional rights outside these four walls. Uh, so many of the judges are appointed and not uh, elected. Federal judges appointed by the president, the national military commander in chief, state judges appointed by the governors. So they have nothing to us. And the difference between the gold flag, French flag, and our flag is a regular flag uh, denotes constitutional law, where we have a jury who makes the decisions. The judge charges the jury, and the jury makes the decisions. 
in a martial law, the judge listens to what the jury has to say, and then he makes his own decisions. So he can have prearranged decisions. You see how the uh, uh, attorneys always talk to the judge, and the attorneys always tell the judge what to do. Um, but in this case, they have no jurisdiction. If you go in that courtroom uh, and uh, join them and accept their jurisdiction, well, they can do with you what you want. But you can go in there and say, ah, you have no jurisdiction over me. I'm not military and whatever and walk out. You don't have to stay there. You allow yourself to go in there. Now, what kind of court is that here in this county? It's a military court. It's an old French flag. Now, I'm going to give you that so you have no doubt in your mind that's what it is. And this does not belong here. They are uh, infringing on us all the time. And I was appalled when I came through that door. Just really appalled. You spoke to Judge Jackson about that? What? You mean spoke to Judge Jackson? Nope. He knows. Oh, they know. The attorney knows too. Because this is what they do. They plea bargain all the time. Did you ever notice that? Plea bargain. Yeah, uh, okay, you're going to get 40 years in jail if you're proven not guilty. But if you go in there and say you're guilty, we'll only give you five years. But I'm innocent. Well, five years is better than 40. You know, this is what they do. And you, people accept that. <coughs> They're coerced into accepting it. So, uh, why would I go to anybody when I have you sitting here? You are the top power in this county. This committee here is top power in our here. Everybody comes to you. The police come to you. Well, everybody. Treasurer comes in here. You guys are superior in your county. If the president of the United States walked in here, I don't know if he wants to say hi or get out. But nevertheless, when he says, I'm, I'm, I want you to tell all your citizens they got to give me 50 bucks a piece. Do they know? We have no jurisdiction here. We don't take mandates from you. I want you to find out what exactly is going on, where you stand legally. You stand tall and in front of everybody in this county. You're all here to protect the people of the county. And this ties into this because this guy is going all around the country all trying to tell these people uh, of their counties that they have the power. Um, there is no doubt that our federal government is gearing up to take us. I got that on the other side. They're arming themselves. They've got so many bullets that we don't have any you know, shortage of bullets. It's because they're buying them all up. They're buying them up in the name of uh, the, yeah, the Department of Education, NDA, all these things. They're buying up all these bullets. Um, they're having, they've ordered 30,000 drones to put in our skies by uh, 2020. And what are they doing all this for? They got armored cars. And I want to ask you a question while I sit here. Who paid for this? Uh, I can't even say that. That doorway. I'm Metal just, detector. Metal detector. Yeah. Are, are you are you guys threatened or what's the deal? There's been threats on, in the courthouse, yes. Two since I've been sworn. That I know of.
think it's grand. Believe me. I like your intentions in that. But on the other side, I see this as um, police state stuff. You were just, population is just getting overrun with uh, all these rules and whatever. But anyway, I am for you. That's my story. I hope you'll watch this. I hope it works. You've got to watch it on the computer, though. I tried it last night, and I can't. I took it to my neighbors, and it wouldn't play, but it does play on a computer. You can see Sheriff Jeff and all these people. Uh, this is only a small part of their meeting, but these people go, are just dedicated, going around, having a, a conference once a year, so that uh, they're trying to unite the sheriffs. And I would like you to seriously think about, I don't know, do you talk to the other sheriffs in uh, Southern Illinois? Or? I don't personally. I'm sure Ted does. Uh, well, I just feel that I want you to know what's going on. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is really happening in the Constitution. Yes, you gave me one of those last time. Oh, did I? Yep. Okay, well, I couldn't remember. I really don't want to do this. I'm just driven because I know so much. And it's, it's powerful. Well, anyway, thank you. Have a great day. Don't, don't let Tim uh, take the feet. He might get to it before you ask him. He, he's a gentleman like that. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Did I give him a fist? Yes, you did. Well, Mr. Taylor, you missed <coughs> Did I really? Yes. Uh oh. You can sit back down and tell us. Tell him again. <laughs> hey, would you? Uh, I, that'll only play. I'll give you a video that where that's up that not that meeting, but one just like it. So I wish you'd take that and play it on a, a, a cons, What is it? Computer. Computer. I'm so rattled. Thank you for <laughs> oh, being up with fine. me. You're doing good. Am I? Did a good job. Okay. Thank you, They're going to let me talk to the yeah. ladies first. What did you do? Oh, did you do that? Oh, I thought you were talking to your ball game. I said, what? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. So we got to go on to Tennessee. Is it? Is it? Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead. She's hard to follow. She is. She does a good job. And you know what? Uh, as, as Betty's friend, I consider her a good friend now. I met her uh, seven or eight years ago. Some of the things that she was saying were things that, that I had already begun to you know, recognize and say, you know, kind of can go along with that. And some of a lot of things she would say, I kind of maybe roll my eyes and say, you know, either you're a crackpot or, or I'm not ready to receive this yet. But uh, unfortunately for, for me, uh, I've found that that she's not a crackpot, she's, but she's ahead of the curve. And uh, things that, that we were, that all, most all of us were rolling our eyes about, about six or seven years ago, uh, you know, things that, that we said were the logical progression of where you know, things like the Patriot Act or the NDAA, the, the road that, that would take us down. And when we hear the mainstream media now telling us that, that there literally are armed drones over U.S. soil. You know, all of a sudden we're like, hold on a second. Uh, so so I, I say all that just to, to tell you guys that uh, I, I appreciate that for some reason, and you guys know I'm a preacher too, but, but for some reason I, I, I believe that, that God has is, is been a very gracious Matsat County, and, and that, uh, I don't know how long, it, it seems like it's been a couple of years, but at least it's been months, that I would walk past and, and I saw the equipment, I think that was the equipment out in the hall for the, for the metal detector, and it was sitting out there for quite a while, and each time I'd walk past it sitting there, I, I, would act, I was actually thankful, I was like, you know, thank you Lord, because I've been in Pulaski and Johnson and Alexander and, and all these other little courthouses over in Jonesboro where you, you, you go through and, and it's just like Larry Glasgow described 
earlier. You know, you got your belt buckle or your steel toe boots or your pocket knife. Next thing you know, there's a, there's this line held up, and, and, and you know the same thing. You put park, you don't realize you're going to do an appraisal or something. You park on the wrong side of the courthouse, and you get up there to the, to the closest door, and it's like, oh, you got to go all the way around the building now, you know, because it is. So uh, the thing that that I appreciate so much about what Betty has to say is it. And sometimes I think she, she kind of, because she doesn't know so much, she, she chases the, the rabbit down the, the, the path uh, of details when really it's principle, the, the principle that is what I think most Americans are really feeling alarmed by right now. The, the principle that the Fourth Amendment protects us against illegal search and seizure without probable cause. And, and now search search and seizure, your probable cause can mean I want to get on an airplane or I want to come to my county courthouse. And, and all of a sudden, we're feeling violated that the principle has, has deteriorated. So, and so, so uh, you know, we even have little discussions and arguments uh, within, our, uh, within our group of, you know, what, what what do we what do we bring up? Do we bring up the old French flag, or you know, if 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 people can ignore the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution and the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution, then of course they're going to ignore you know these other. Uh, so are you saying that you don't agree with the security at the court? Well, uh, actually. Uh, I, I was wanting to ask a few questions. Betty asked one if there had been threats. I, I was wondering if we had a stabbing uh, and, or, or an assault at the courthouse or someone has pulled, pulled, pulled a weapon. I didn't know if they had or not. And uh, if, if they hadn't, I, if we hadn't had a shooting, uh, I, I was wondering if we had had any known acts that have taken place in our courthouse that that we feel like this would have prevented well, up to this point. If we I think anything. we all would agree. You never know when that's going to happen. I mean, you're a victim. You like, can violence yourself. Absolutely. You know. I, I, in case, if, if I can, uh, in, in 1993, 20 years ago this August, I was shot in the face by a man with a, uh, a nine millimeter handgun from about you to the eye. And I was delivering pizzas, and it was uh, anyway. So just so you kind of know, I, yeah, as as a victim of of random, if you will, gun violence, I, that, I feel like it helps me to speak to this yeah. also. But I, mean, I guess by me saying that, you never know when that's going to happen. I mean, just like when you go and knock on that door, you had no idea or how it happened. I'm not sure. Right. I mean, you just never know when something like this can happen. <coughs> And, and, and so, I th and I think, here's the thing, for, for those of us who are kind of, you know, outside the loop, uh, unfortunately, too many times, our, our input comes too late. And it's not your fault, it's our fault, you know, for, for not, you know, paying attention when things are going on. But, but part of the discussion that, that I think there's a lot of people in our country okay, that, that would at least like to for it to either be revisited or to be addressed is do we do we as citizens of Massac County do we think that the the primary role of, of our uh, sheriff and, and local police departments is, is the primary role of the police to prevent crime or is the primary role of the police to, after the crime has been committed, to come to investigate, to find the, the perpetrator of the crime, to arrest him and see that justice is done. And, and, and that's where I, I feel like our nation as a whole, I don't know to use those terms, but, but everything is, is really originates at the, at the 
grassroots level, and, and I think when we're talking politics, county level is pretty grassroots. Is is are, are we going to are, are we going to go along with the what what I would contend is a myth? The myth is that that law enforcement prevents crime. going to buy into the reality that an armed citizenry prevents crime. And we've had the, you know, we had the, several years ago, you guys did a great job. We put the, the non-binding referendum about uh, concealed carry on, on our, you know, we appreciate that. And and what we found, you know, here, you know, Brandon Phelps put forth the legislation. Now we've got at least some semblance of concealed carry here in the state of Illinois. But the reality is when we all open up our newspapers and we, we see where all the, the violence is taking place, the, the mass shootings are on college campuses and, and schools, and, and even when we do read about courthouse killings, even the, the movie theater in, in Aurora, Colorado, there's seven movie theaters in, in Aurora, Colorado and there's only one movie theater that had posted on the door out front that concealed carry couldn't be practiced in that movie theater. And that's the one where it took place. <laughs> and so I, I, I say all of this to kind of hopefully form the question of is, is this based, based on in, in an ideal situation where you know we get to print the money like the feds, federal government does, you know, let's put all the, the safeguards in place that we can. But since we're really under under the thumb of, of a tight budget and I guess operating in the red because of the state being so slow in paying us, that That, that we consider the possibility that this would be a, like a trial, something that, that we're doing as a trial. The problem, the problem with that language, though, is if we haven't had a stabbing or a shooting in the last 50 years, to Joe Miller's article, did y'all happen to see that in the planet? Yes, I did. Yeah, and it, it, if that's the case, then we can't really two years from now say, hey, it's work. We haven't had a stabbing or a shooting at the courthouse. You know, because we haven't had one in 50 years leading up to it. So we so can't. Are you suggesting you wait until you have a shooting or a stabbing? Of course, uh, no. No, because just like in the case of me being shot, that there's there's nothing that would have prevented that if a policeman would have been standing on the corner. That still, but 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 the underlying question within the question is, is that the price of freedom? Do we have to have a policeman on every corner before we do feel safe? And 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 do we all have to give up all of our our rights? Do we have to give up our Second Amendment right to to self protection, whether it's from a bad guy or from a, a tyrannical government? that right before we can be a free people because if that's the case then communist China they're safer than we are and, and the Soviet Union was safer than we are Nazi Germany was safer than we are because all of them had their 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 rights taken away from them of self-protection so the principle that, that and, and this is you know I'm, I'm thankful that we do have the guys here because the that you, get, you guys seem to be dealing with with things from an ideological perspective of, you know, what just a while ago when Ted Holder was talking about these cars and stuff, the, the bottom line question was, is it in your budget? Yeah, it's in his budget. Then, of course, he can do it. But then in that same way, then the underlying question for, for us as citizens is, are they constitutionally protected from this? Yes, they are. If they're if we're constitutionally protected from something by the founding documents, spring law of our land, 
that no matter how good of an idea it seems to fly drones overhead that, that are armed, or, or no matter how good of an idea it seems to randomly stop us at checkpoints and say, show us your papers, they can't do it because we're constitutionally protected. I guess the way I look at it, uh, the employees came to us and have asked us repeatedly for security to make them feel better. Uh, and it took us time to try to make sure we had enough budget. But I don't personally have an issue with it because if the employees ask for it, they want it, they feel like it's the right thing to do. Could I, could I address that before we get other statements on that? And, and, and that's the question. Uh, that's, that's really the fundamental question about our Constitution is if, if the Constitution is the supreme law of our land and 51% of the people decide that they don't like that, that Constitution anymore, then is that Constitution done away with? In a pure democracy, that's how it would work. But when we stand and we put our hand over our heart and we salute the flag, our pledge says, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. And so, so by definition, because we are in this republic, we're not a, a democracy. So, so the, the way that our, our uh, rights, whether it's the Second Amendment right or Fourth Amendment right or Tenth Amendment right, any of our rights that, that we've been guaranteed in writing by this document, they can't be taken away just because I feel safe, I feel unsafe. I can't say, you know, I feel unsafe, so I want y'all to go through the city of Metropolis and, and collect everybody's handguns. They're saying, oh, oh, well, we can't do that because the Constitution gives them, and, and I mean, just reading the paper this week, if I can give you all this principle. If you remember back during the Clinton administration, uh, they made it well known that they, they weren't going to go after child pornographers. When, when Bush was elected in 2000 and John Ashcroft became his attorney general, he said, we're going to go after child pornographers. And of course, 10 months later or whenever 9-11 happened, all of a sudden all that stuff kind of swept out of the paper. But the reality is, uh, state's attorneys, sheriffs, the, the people that, like Betty pointed out, that are accountable to you guys, they they make decisions about what we're going to strictly enforce and what we're going to loosely enforce. And, and so, I don't know the details of it, just what the Planet reported last week, but, but when we have a person who, who uh, the, the girlfriend comes to get their possession, get her possessions back from the boyfriend, He's like, yeah, you guys go ahead, and they find two weapons in there. And according to the article in the paper, there wasn't anything out of line. He just had two guns in there, and the police asked to see his FOID card. Well, the Constitution, do you have that Constitution? Would you hand me the, the second? You guys know the Second Amendment. It says, the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so so, so here's, here's what I think Betty and I and Joe Miller and... and, and, and folks like us, what we would ask you guys to consider is as you're giving direction to, you know, whether it's, it's uh, the sheriff for, for purposes of, of law enforcement, treasurer, or the, the different offices as they're taking direction from you guys, say, you know, we know that this unconstitutional law has been in effect in Illinois now for what, a couple of decades, this FOIA card. But, but it, it, it goes against the supreme law of our land. It says our lot right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And so this person who, who was exercising his right of home defense, having, having his farms there, we don't need to prosecute him because he didn't have a foot card. That, it, 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 it's, Let me ask a question. Yeah. How do you prevent... Void card doesn't prevent an yeah, unstable it, person. I mean, it is there no, no information they have to write out that checks in out or anything? I've never applied to this. I wouldn't know. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, I had to pay my five dollars. That's all I had to do. But but if they knew my political beliefs, there's a lot of people who would say that that I'm a potential right wing nut job terrorist. You know, take away his right to guns because he believes that the Constitution of the United States should be upheld. And, and, and that's the thing, whoever defines the terms gets to win the argument. When, when, when constitutionalist and, and, and basically a Judeo-Christian ethic was the norm in the United States, then we were all okay because we trusted the people who were, who were defining the words. But now, the definition of the word terrorist really scares me. The, the, the thought that they're telling that this was a directive by the uh, Attorney General of the State of Missouri. They're giving directives to the state police saying people that have uh, constitutional uh, bumper stickers, uh, I think Ron Paul was one of them, uh, Tea Party stuff, if you got the yellow flag that says don't tread on me, you know, these are folks you need to really keep your eye on. Oh, and veterans. Veterans are someone they're really susceptible to. to. So, what we're hopefully trying to reinforce in you guys is that you guys really are our protection at the county level. That, that what you do really does matter. And, and the, 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 the Jeffersons and the Adams, I, I hate to use, you know, have to, to, to go back to that, but, but those decisions are really not based, based on pragmatism what seems good at the time, or even what's popular among the people. It's what's the underlying principle behind that. And if, if a dozen people to feel safe means that all 15,000 people in the county have to give up their right to uh, being a legal search and seizure without probable cause, or, or to take away my pocket knife, we all know a pocket knife is not a weapon, it's a tool. It's a, it can be used as a weapon, but in not even 99%, in 999, 9.999, it's a tool. It's something that we, we use and we function with it. And, and now to say, and, and, and that's the thing, whenever these tragedies have happened, they happen in places where the bad guy can be confident that he's the only one armed. Or, in the case of our county, if I just take out the guy at the door, that's that's the, that's what that bad guy's thinking. He's, he's the only one on They're putting all this in him that, you know, and, and so in effect, what we do with honestly great intentions to try to make people feel safe, that's really what we do. We try to do it to make people feel safe, but the, the unintended consequences, we make people less safe. I don't expect you guys to believe it, even based on my feeble little argument today, but, but these are the kinds of principles that we have to wrestle with in our mind and say, okay, what really, 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 if, if, if we're going to be pragmatic, how many crimes are prevented by law enforcement and how many are simply investigated? And uh, our, our founding fathers said that an armed populace was the, the best protection for the people. Not just against the tyrant of the drug work, but against the bad guys too. And it's it's always that that's the thing, our our a free society is always going to be vulnerable. We're always going to be vulnerable and we're going to be susceptible to that you, you, you said maybe crazy person or lunatic, but, but I say evil. Who said that? I said that. Yeah, yeah I, think you, I think you might have used a word that meant that same thing. What we do about the crazy person that comes in here shooting. I said unstable. Unstable, yeah. Yeah, I think that is mentally unstable. But, 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 but it is spiritual. And, and I think it's evil. And, and so if, we, if we're really going to be free, and I think that we still have that. And that's that county that we still have the potential to live that way, to, to live the way our grandfathers lived in, the, in a free society. But it, it, it's, it's going to take, you know,
know, you guys making hard and sometimes unpopular decisions. And if if you guys are as bad about communication as I am, the hardest thing for me to do is is, is once I tell my kids why I've reached or, or once I reach my decision, is is going back and trying to explain. Okay, here's how I here's why I reached this decision. You may disagree with it. You may agree with it. But here's what I base it on. And, and, and for me, there's two things that I have to have. It's my source of authority first has to be the Bible. If, if it's a principle of Scripture, that the, the Scripture clearly communicates, teaches this principle, then I feel like I have to live by it as myself as well as govern by it in the areas where I've been given authority to govern, whether it's on the baseball field or in my family. And, and then the second source of authority that rests on the scriptures is, is the U.S. Constitution. And well, I didn't come up here to sound preachy, but, but I, I, I really want you guys to, to know how much we do. We depend on we depend on you and righteous rulings and God exalted the, the it says the, the righteous nation, but, but I, I think it's even any level, if it's a county that's it's doing what's right and according to his principles and, and, and freedom is, is a biblical principle it, and by by living free it means that bad guys are, are going to be free too and, and John F. Kennedy once said that this one came out after 9-11 uh, they went back to an old quote from J.F. Kennedy but he said in a free society that there's always going to, to it's, it, he basically said it's going to be impossible to stop someone from doing harm to others if they're, if, if they're willing to lose their own life in doing so. If, if somebody's willing to, you know, to, to lose their life in the commission of a crime, it's a highly unlikely that you can ever pre prevent that commission of that crime. So I would say all this, just the, the 30,000 or so, is that, that what we're out of pocket? Probably 24,000 to 30,000. Okay. So on the high end, 30,000. The 30,000 a year, um, I, I do realize it comes out of Larry Grace's some fund, that, but if, if that fund, if it was not going to fund this, would that money be going into the general fund? It wouldn't be it wouldn't be coming into the general fund, but if he wasn't willing to do that, the money suspended for the security would be coming out of the general fund. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. <coughs> would, would you would you the, the money for the security? It's my understanding, and I, I'm not sure. I haven't. You know, it's coming out of it. It's coming. Mr. Grace has funds set up, which are collected through fines. All right. And that is what he's using to pay the security officers, which relieves General Fund of that obligation. And if we did the same thing, he was not willing to use those funds, that of those monies would be coming out of General Fund. So this is this is money that's just free for him to spend at his discretion. He can with certain with, stipulations. With stipulations and approval from the judge. Well, uh, I, I hope that all this was was just kind of a catalyst to cause me to get off my lazy rear and come up here. And, 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 and actually, Joe Miller Sr.'s letter to the editor in the, in the paper was a catalyst. But, but I, hope, I hope you're hearing me say more than this, that Pearson came up to talk about the metal detectors because really the principles of, of what it means to, to be a free society really in question in our nation like never before. You guys are in the hot seat, uh, at least at the local level, to, to be the guardians of, of freedom. Thank you. Uh, unless these two guys get into the photo, but they say we're not. I would ask one last question, then, and, and 
and that is <coughs> uh, in, in response to the question, do we have to wait until something bad happens before we would take preventative measures? Um, where, where, where does that stop? Where, where can a crime be committed that we, we say, well, if it happens again, it just happens again. So we've got daycare centers here in, in the city. They don't have metal detectors. At, at what point do we say, trust the citizens of our county to do what's right. And for the ones who step out of line, we've got the ones over here that are either practicing their concealed carry uh, rights. How about I mean, use a, a daycare? We don't have people going to daycare that's coming to court for something they did wrong. I mean, obviously in the courthouse, there's people coming here that has did something wrong. You don't go to the courthouse very often to smile. Oh, I, I agree. Or, or, that, or that how about um, and hopefully, uh, or how about in a domestic situation where there's a divorce one? There's sometimes people don't agree on everything, mm -hmm. and the the battle gets hotter as it progresses through the door. They may be mad when they walk through the door. Have you ever been here well, where, where there's arguments out in the hallway and it's worked really well? I've, yeah, I've heard some uh, have you threats. Been here? Have you been here and Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so it, it puts yeah. the employees in a tough situation. I agree it does. I agree it does. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. Betty, you had a question? You said you wanted to ask a question. Yeah, I want to know about that money that uh, uh, he agreed to spend whatever <coughs> Larry Grace from all these fines. What would you like to know about it? I want to know why he gets to have, have control of that or what he did. What does he have because to Because the state statute, it's written in. Why doesn't it go into solution? the treasury? It is. I mean, it, it is the, the treasurer can. The treasurer have, you know, pass it over there. But I mean, you have, I mean, there's a you a have so many funds. funds. I mean, you have this many different funds in the county courthouse, and they're, and they're specified for certain things. I find that very interesting. Yeah. Well, I just Larry's thought the treasurer paid all the bills. Thank you, guys. They do. They do write a check. What? They do write the check, oh, but it, right. but he has the approval of the expenditure has to come through Larry Grace in the judge's office. Thank you very much. You've been very kind again. Thank you, Betty. You didn't get rid of me the first time, but I'm going. Or this or something like that. What'd you say? Cookies or something like that. Yeah, Jason likes cookies. Apple pie. <laughs> Thank you. Take care.